that we can start recording and so with all the technicalities out of the way i would like to greet you all once again to our fellow ux society members and would like to officially welcome you to ux devs first workshop entitled programming fundamentals my name is key the key to your heart i'm healing like at the card from 2bsme and i'm so excited to be your host for today's workshop. UX Dev has a lot of things in store for all of you to learn in this work workshop. So I hope you guys are all uh, coming home later with a new insight. Our first speaker for today is our very own AVP for projects in engineering. He is now in his third year in BSMS computer science. He was one of last year's front end development officers of UX Soft. And he's currently focusing on front end web development and web optimization. And so with that, without further ado, I would like to call up to our virtual stage, Mr. Jimson Ehouse. Hello, hello, Jimson. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'll start yeah. sharing my screen now. And I'll introduce myself later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh yeah. Yeah, can you see it now? Yes. Hello. Okay, so uh okay, I'll do this myself first. So my name is Jameson E. House. I'm from 3BSMS Computer Science. And I'll give you a brief and along why I got into coding. So I decided to when I was in senior high, I was really struggling to find find a course because parang there's too many there are too many options. Ganon. And then uh, I enjoyed coding kasi talaga kasi it's fun, it's challenging, but it's fun. So in a way, it's uh, it has to have parang, parang may mga problems talaga na kailangan mong isolve. And yung challenge na yun, yung, yung parang nag-fuel sa akin to continue coding. Parang we had activities before na talagang di ako makatulog kasi I can't, <laughs> I can't solve the problems. Pero when you do solve them naman, it's very rewarding. So siguro yung experience na yun for me is why I'm pursuing this field. So things I wish I knew before I started to code. Actually, uh, I started to code because, I, I sorry, di pala. <laughs> I think I wish I knew before I started to code. So first, that we don't really have to know every concept before we get to uh, coding. Kasi parang yun yung problem ko before na parang I want to know all the concepts na kagad, di ba? Kasi parang I want to be ready kasi Pero uh, it's more on the practice kasi when you do it uh, talaga na at the site, kung, kung saan man siya gagawin, talagang yung practice na yun, yun yung magtuturo sa'yo to how to code. So I think yun lang, tandaan nyo talaga na practice is very important, not, not really yung parang concepts lang. So yeah, and also you'll definitely forget some syntax eventually with like sobrang daming programming languages out there. Parang you'll eventually forget some syntax ganun, kahit yung very basic syntaxes. Pero it's okay naman. Yun nga, siguro yun lang din na-realize ko na you know, Google is your friend. Talagang just look it up and wala namang ano yun. <laughs> you don't have to feel bad about it. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go through yung topics na to. So, the yung agenda natin for today. We want to go over these five topics, variables data structures, control structures, syntax, and functions. So, iyan yung sana madiscuss natin lahat ngayon. We'll introduce you the, to the fundamentals of programming and hopefully at the end of today, you have ano, grasp na dun sa fundamental knowledge na yun. And it's very, I think, universal naman. Like, for most of the programming languages, this is very helpful. So, yeah, don't worry about other programming languages sa ngayon. But we'll, we're gonna learn Python, Python today. And uh, also, we hope that you will be able to learn how to make your own user-defined functions, and that will show your, your understanding of the fundamentals of programming. Okay, with that, I think we can begin with our first topic. Am I speaking too fast? I feel like I'm speaking too fast. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to ask naman kung gets pa. So, respond na lang kayo via kahit reactions lang ganun. So, I know na okay pa tayo. So, first one is variable. So, Variables, I think this is one of the most uh, basic things talaga sa programming. Kasi when you create a program, there should be a way for you to 
store or contain yung values na na gagamitin mo and also to manipulate it. So that's the first thing dito. So how do we create a variable? So a variable, you have to first uh, identify kung anong name yung ibibigay mo sa certain var variable. So that's the var name here. Yung syntax equals yung value na gusto mong store. So let's gonna, we're gonna go to our Google Colab. I think uh, itong file na to ay provided na sa chat. So I think you can access it there. This is gonna be the, this will be the, the platform that we're gonna use for the entire session. So make sure to uh, na may access kayo. You have to sign in kahit anong account naman. It's okay. And you will, okay lang mag-change kayo ng kung ano-ano dito ha. So you can add your own stuff like uh, name, variable, or something. It won't matter naman. Hindi masasave sa amin. Pero if you wish to save yung file, you can go to head over to file and then save a copy and drive and it will be saved in your respective Google Drive folders. Okay. So, yeah. So this is Google Colab. This is an online uh, browser. Uh, you, you can check your Python code. Parang that's the purpose of this ano, platform. So this is what we're using. Okay. We're trying to create a variable, but we discussed it, that it will store value. So if we run this piece of code using the parang play button, run button sa gilid, uh, it will actually run yung code na yan. So we, it creates yung variables na sinet natin. So x will be equals to hello world, ganyan, y is, to, is equals to 12, and so on. So how would we know na gumagana yung, yung program natin and yung code natin? Uh, this is where print comes in. Because print is a very handy tool, like for all programming languages naman yun. So if you want to see if it works, okay, feel free naman to, ano, na ganito din gawin nyo, ha? Like, ano na lang, sumabay na lang kayo kasi uh, that's how you learn talaga. You need to practice it. So try printing any of the, ano naman, any of the variables. So let's say we want to put, we want to print Z. Okay, Z is should be 3.45. So makikita niya dito, the output is indeed 3.45. So ganun lang. Basically, that's how you store, how you create variables. So yun na, nakagawa na tayo ng variables. Okay. Uh, you can try then different, uh, ano, other, ano pa, multiple lines of prints, pwede rin yun. Pero it will follow then yung how many, kung, kung yung order din, kung paano niya siya pinrint, ganun. Kasi it's very sequ sequential yung Python, ano natin, programming. Okay, so we can also overwrite the values na sinet natin before. So that's one good thing in Python. You can overwrite values. So we already set na x is equals to hello world. Don't forget to run your code pala ha, kasi it won't be saved if, if hindi nyo nira run. So since we already run x and then we printed it and it says hello world talaga, we can overwrite it and print it again. So it will have the new value there. Okay, you can see. You can see that it prints the new our new value. So it will take the last assigned value to it. So yung first na value niya, makakalimutan na niyan. So basically, hindi naman siya mag exist And then a variable's data type can also be changed. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss uh, data types uh, further later later on. Pero you can also change it. So from, from y is equals to 12, which is an integer, integer, a whole number, um, you can change it to a string, which is a text basically, yung string, yun lang yun. Uh, and then it will take on the last value na nilagay natin. So it, y is now equals to 12 instead of 12 na integer. Okay. Variables are also case sensitive, meaning nagvavary sila, ay nag, nagmamatter kung uh, uppercase or lowercase yung characters na ilalagay natin. So UX, a lowercase UX can have the value of 5. And uppercase UX can have the value Jimson, diba? So you can try printing it here. Just follow through na lang. Siguro on your own. And then, yeah, we can see that if we print UX, lowercase UX, it will have the value uh, 5. And then, if, if ganun din mangyayari kapag sa uppercase UX naman, we'll have the value Jimson. Okay, a uh, variable name. Uh, you can also identify the data type of a certain variable using type and then inside the parentheses yung variable name natin. Kasi type, it's, ma appreciate niyan later on pa, pero sometimes we need to identify the type. So if you want to know the type, ano kaya type nitong UX and then yung uppercase UX natin, it's 
int, int for integer, and str for string. So, tama naman, di ba? I mean, <laughs> tama pa naman yung program natin so far. Okay, as, as shown to you previously, dito sa variable creation, ano natin, na we can actually perform operations by creating variables. So, for this example, a is equals to 5, and then we can set b to be equals to a plus 2, or actually anything. It can be a times 8, sorry, a times 8, or something, kahit ano dun. So, you can perform them. You can also have them parang group, so it knows yung parang priority niya. So, example, a plus 2, and then divided by 3. So that would work then. Yeah. I mean, normal operations lang naman. Yeah. Gets pa ba? <laughs> I hope gets pa. Can you like heart the app or something if you understand na gets pa naman? Yay, thank you. Uh, okay, yan. So it prints 7. It's a 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay. Casting. So it is an important part din to of, of programming. Kasi Python ought actually automatically uh, parang nalalaman na kagan niya automatically yung type ng data na ilalagay natin sa certain variable. For example, 5. When you uh, when you actually set this na 5, parang alam na niya na it's an integer. Pero if you want to change yung data type niya, kasi 5 can also be a string, uh, it can, actually you can put, you can make it a string by putting quotation marks kasi lahat ng string ay may quotation, quotation marks when you create them. Pero you can also cast it. So, yan. Katulad niyan, ibig sabihin, it will treat Five as a string instead of an integer. So if we print this, five pa rin. So parang walang pinagkaiba. Pero actually, mag-error to, can you see this commented out line of code? When you add, when you try to run this b plus a plus 2, given na yung a natin ay string na, mag-error siya actually. Sige, let's check. Okay. So ayan know, cannot can only concatenate string, not into string. So parang yung siya gumagana. Okay, so... Okay, let's try... Basically, ganun lang. It's very use, useful if you want... My in, yung input mo is to change to integer. Kasi example, if you input a number, we'll get into this later naman. Uh, parang it, yung, it, when you have an input, it automatically assumes na string yung, yung input mo. So if you want to change it to an integer or uh, integer float or boolean, kailangan mo siyang i-cast. So explain ko naman yun later. I think that's all. You can also see this naman. Like, uh, tingnan yun na lang kasi yeah, basically it's all about casting lang din. Okay, I think we can move on na to our next topic which is Data structure. So basically, yun yung variables. Medyo ano lang naman. Basic, it's very basic lang. Diba? Setting ano lang. Creating variables. And then, uh, so for data structures, we have four basic or primitive data structures. Na na-discuss na later. Float is basically a number with decimal values. And then integer is a whole number. Maybe negative, positive, anything. Uh, string is a text. And then Boolean is either true or false lang. Okay. There are also non-primitive data structures, as I forgot to discuss. A data structure is a specialized format for organizing, processing, retrieving, and storing data. So, magigets niya yan once we discuss yung list siguro. Non-primitive data structures includes, actually marami sila, but we're only going to discuss the list for this part since Medyo complicated yung iba and you only actually need to learn about list for the fundamentals. So lists allow uh, allows us to uh, store multiple values in a single variable. Lists are mutable, meaning it can also be changed after it is created. So list items are ordered, changeable, and allows duplicate values. It can contain elements of different data types, uh, other lists, objects, etc. Okay, a list. Uh, keeps track of the order of using indexes beginning with zero. So that's how Python counts kasi. So this is basically a way lang for it to know kung ano yung, uh, kung, kung paano i-access yung mga items dun sa list natin. So yun lang. So basically, yung nasa first position is always gonna be zero. And then mag increment lang siya by one. So one, two, and so on. Yun na. For example naman, ito. Uh, when we, pag pinagpalit natin yung position ni John and Abby, 
uh, Abby will now have the index number of zero instead of one. Kasi hindi talaga siya tied dun sa sa kung ano man value item yung nandun. But instead, nandun, nakatay siya dun sa position nila. Okay. I hope nag-gets pa. Okay. So how do we create a list? Basically, same lang for variable. Ang pinagkaiba lang, you'll... you'll, you'll First, you'll identify the name, equals, and then brackets. And then inside the brackets should be the values na gusto yung store. Maybe integers or floats, kahit ano naman. Okay, let's go back to our colab file. Data structures. Okay, a data structure is specialized for ayun nga, specialized format for organizing, processing, and retrieving stored data. Uh, ito, na-discuss na natin kanina. And then let's try to create a list. So students... Uh, let's create this list students na example sa class nila. This is how they'll keep track naman kung paano yung kung sino-sino yung nandun sa class. Okay. And then we print yung, we can also print yung entire list natin. So we'll see na, you know, sa output natin, uh, nandun yung names nila. Okay. We can also use the function length to know, to identify the length of our list. Okay. So we can see naman, di ba, na five lang yung items natin. But for items with like sobrang daming numbers, medyo mahirap na siyang i-keep track. So that's how you, that's why you use len. Ganun. Feel free to try it talaga ha, kasi that's how you learn naman. If you want to print the first item in the list, we can use indexes. So this is how, this is where uh, indexes come in. Kasi especially, you need to, there will come a point in time when you will have to access a specific part lang ng list, no? So, for example, if you want to know sino yung first, sino yung last, ganon, we can use indexes. So, we know na yung first item should be zero kasi yun yung first index natin. So, we'll see na tama naman. John is indeed in the first slot of our list. And then, you can also use negative indexes if you want to, ano naman, parang count from the end. Ganun lang. So, that's how you create the list. Uh, so, Kyle is nasa last siya. So, negative 1. Since wala namang negative 0, hindi pwedeng negative, hindi pwedeng 0 yung nasa dola. So, it's negative 1. And then, Bea has the index negative 2. So, basically, they have two indexes, both positive and negative. Diba? Kasi, yeah. Parang si John has a positive, sorry, Kyle has a positive index of 4. And then, uh, Kyle also has the negative index of negative one. Okay. We can also access multiple consecutive indexes at the same time. Pero keep in mind na yung last, for example, the range naman to, from index two to three. The problem is with Python, it doesn't, and di talaga nila kinakount tong last index. So when you print this, as we can see, Justin lang yung magpiprint, which is only yung second index natin. Which is weird, di ba? Pero <laughs> that's how that's how it works. Okay, so if you want na ano siya, na kasama yung index t, you have to put four. So basically, kilangan magpo plus one ka if you want na kasama yun. Kapag naman hindi specified yung end, it will print all the outputs, di ba? From one to the end of the list, and then kapag yung simula naman yung uh, hindi specified from the beginning of the list until the specified index. Okay, we can also change the values inside inside their list. So we'll have to uh, access your specific index nila. So similar to how we will change the value of a certain variable, we we can also access yung example ito. So sino yung nasa index to natin? It is Justin. So we can change yung index to natin to Sam. And then it will replace Justin with Sam. So that's how it works. Hmm. Okay, we can also add, add and append items, but I think you can uh, do it or do this on your own naman. Kasi append yan, how, uh, if you want to use the append function, it will add something at the end of the list and then insert if you want to insert it to a specific point or a specific index. So, dito 3. So, I want to put cat in index 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And there it is, cat. And then call at the end of the list because I used a pen. Okay, you can also remove items you know, of a specific value. For example, I want to remove a certain name. 
ang gagawin naman nito, i-delete niya yung instances ng name na yun. So, if I want to delete Kath and then pop index number 5. So, when I I first remove Kath, so, uh, ima just imagine that na wala na to si Kath. And then, index number 5 is 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, si Carl, mapapop natin when we put pop 5. Okay, so we have yung five ulit na meron tayo at the beginning. Okay, I think we can, um, that's all for our list. Next is control structures. So control structures uh, is a way for us to control the order of the code execution. So Python uh, exec actually executes the code uh, sequentially, ibig sabihin sunod-sunod yun, kung paano mo siya, si paano mo siya in-arrange on how, on while you're coding it, ganun din niya i-execute yung code mo. So, kung nauna yung x is equals to 5, and then nagbago isip mo, you want it to, actually, don't do this. Pero, <laughs> if yung nagbago isip mo and you just put x is equals to 7, it will take yung last na nilagay mo kasi nga, sequentially siya. Pero, there are also ways to uh, parang loop i-discuss natin to and also make decisions depending on your code. This is this, this will be I hopefully mapakita namin sa inyo later yung practical uses niya. Okay. Uh import, important note, indentation is very important in Python kasi uh parang yun yung way nila para malaman <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. Ayun, yun yung way nila para malaman kung saan mag uh parang alin yung under nung specific na command. So, okay, I will explain it later. Basta, ayun yun. Important yung indentation. Just remember that. And then, logical operations can also be used as sa conditions natin. Okay. So, nandito tayo sa if else. So, if you want, for example, uh, to have a specific ano lang, code na mangyayari lang kapag tama, kapag uh, nagpo-fall siya under a certain uh, constraint, we use if, L, if, and, uh, ano, L, if, else, and if. Okay, so if condition is true, ganyan, this is how we do it. Execute this specific code. Else, if, ibig sabihin nitong else, if, kapag hindi siya na to, parang hindi to, hindi siya nagpo-fall dito sa under ng category na to, uh, ito yung, ito yung condition, parang second condition or third condition. Actually, you can have as many elif statements under ng if, pero dapat yung first one mo is if. Laging ganun yan. Basta kapag meron ka pa mag-idadagdag na conditions, ganun, edi, you'll use if, elif. And then, it will execute the code kapag nagpo-fall na sa condition na to, pag hindi pa rin. So, kapag walang condition na pinasukan yung ano natin, yung, in, yung code natin, then, it will execute yung nasa else. Kasi all else dun magpupunta sa, sa else na part. Okay. Uh, okay, sige. I think we can go here muna. And then, sige, while loops muna. For loops uh, pala, sorry, for loops and then while loops. So, for loops naman, parang this is a way to iterate. So, ibig sabihin, kapag gusto mong ulitin yung certain code, like, many times over. May mga ano yun, like counter. For example, if you want to create a counter, parang for example, counter from 1 to 100, kailangan mo siyang i-iterate for a specific number of times, di ba? Parang kailangan mag-add ka ng value ng 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and then 2 plus 1 hanggang makarating ka sa 100. So that's how you use for parang yung mga loops natin in general. You can implement for if you have like a specific range talaga. Like, yun nga, if you want to count for uh, 100 times and then you can put range na lang kung gano'ng kadaming times mo siya gagawin. And then, you can also depend it on a list. For example, parang for all items in this list, pag iisa-isahin niyo yung items sa list na ginawa natin kanina, ganun, you can also uh, do it like that. Okay. Uh, while loops naman, ito naman, if you have a condition na dapat nag-stay true. So, hanggat true yung condition natin, if, parang example, uh, as long as X, uh, yung value natin, yung ina-add natin is less than 100, it will add. Diba? Kasi nga, we're, we're thinking of a counter. It will add. And then kapag hindi na, uh, it, it will stop the code na. 
Ganun. So, sige, let's head over ulit sa ating collab file to see this in action. Okay, if statements, okay, ano to sa grade natin to. So, we'll set first z to be equals to 3.45. Example, ito yung grade natin. And we want to figure out if later on, makikita natin kung ano yung letter grade natin. So, 3.45. If z is greater than or equal to 2, then print z is greater than or equal to 2. Actually, you can modify it. Like, if greater than or equals. Kapag equals, you have to put double equal sign. Kasi yung single equal sign is for uh, creating variables. So, kapag equals lang, as a condition, you have to put 2. And then, pwede yung example. If z is greater than 2, then let's change the ano. Or ano. Or printed statement. Z is... Greater, sorry, I deleted the wrong thing. Okay, greater than 2. And we can run this again, and then it's still true, diba? If the condition is satisfied, it will execute the lines of codes under the if keyword. The else statement will catch anything that are not caught by the conditions. So, ganun lang din. So, similar to this, we can run this. If z is int, which, is it, which it isn't, since meron tayong decimal values, it will print Z is not Z is not an integer. Let's say if Z naman is naging five, and then I run this code again, we can see that what if Z is int? I think there's something wrong with this code, but <laughs> uh, in int, I think it's supposed to be. Oh, it's wrong. Okay, I forgot the correct and Besides, it's it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be yeah, similar to this. <laughs> we can forget syntaxes, but it's so I think uh, what I'm trying to do here in sa code is uh, to find lang if it's an integer or if it's not. So yeah, sige. I'll I'll fix the ano, code later. Okay, LF. Uh for LF we if we set again, sige, I'll set Z to be 3.45. And then if we run this code again, you can see na your grade is B plus since, okay, if Z is greater than or equal to 3.5 A, so it, it isn't, so it will not, it will ignore this part of code. Else if, if Z is less than or 3.5 and Z is greater than or equal to 3, then your grade is B plus. Kapag hindi, B or below. Isigili ganun lang. I hope nagigets pa. Can you <laughs> heart the axe ganun? <laughs> <laughs> if gets pa ha, I'll discuss it na lang more in depth kapag hindi na siguro later. Okay, for loops, basically ganun lang. In range naman, we can have this na for five times, we print hello world. I think it's quite easy to understand pa naman so far. Yung part ni Matthew, baha dun, <laughs> medyo mahira. Pero basically yun lang. X in range. Yung X pwede siya mag kahit ano ha. For hello in I think. Yeah, you can actually change it naman. Like, what well, it doesn't matter ko anong andito. Depending lang kung ano yung gusto yung i-name dun sa specific na variable na yun. And then, yun lang. Range is... Okay, yan pala. You can do this ano naman. It's very simple lang din. And then, while loops naman, on the other hand, okay, what this? What will this while loop do? Diba? X is equals to 1. While X is less than or equal to 10, it will print x. And then, it will, x will be equals to x plus 1. So, what will this do? So, hanggat, diba, see, we have a value of 1. So, first iteration natin, yeah, true pa rin kasi, diba, yung x natin ay is, one, is equals to 1, and then, it is less than equal to 10. So, if you print me x, it will print 1, and then next is x will be x plus 1. Ang x natin right now is 1, di ba? Kasi yung yun din is ina na natin, din clear. And then, magpa plus 1 siya, ngayon, magiging value ng x natin will be 2. And then, magra-run ulit siya, since uulitin lang niya itong while loop, so x natin dito will now be 2. So I hope you get kung ano, gets nyo kung ano yung ginagawa ng program natin. So if you run this, we can see na it it creates yung counter lang from 1 to 10. Yan. I think you can review this for yourself naman. Okay. Uh, siguro, siguro small challenge. 
ay sana hindi pa tum ano masyado mahirap for you pero uh ditong what's the grade problem you can try it for yourself a teacher wants to create a program to know the final grade of their students luckily all the activities have the same weight so uh the grade the final grade will be determined by simply finding the average of all activities so to allow the program to be more flexible it will ask for input so uh it will hindi record pala yung hindi recorded yung uh, hindi fixed yung number of activities and then it will take as many inputs as the teacher teacher wishes so for this part yan di ba nakita niyo we, we nagset na tayo ng grades pero wala pang value yung grades natin so use a while loop to create itong ano natin uh, program natin sige you can try it i think we'll give you around five minutes to do it yourself and then uh i'll explain it yung answer later on sige feel free naman to ano try it lang no wrong answers just try it <laughs> and then yeah actually we may ano naman na siya, may guide naman na so i think just try to follow na lang kung ano yung yung kinawa natin before and then we'll be ano na, you'll be you'll have the the correct code na gets ba if you want to parang pa-check ipa-check yung ano niyo feel free to i think we have a link for that sa chat parang yan i think yeah Matthew sent it sa chat parang kapag mali so this is an example of casting pala ha kasi input nga natin is automatically assumed to be a string pero what we need is an integer input so we cast it lang and then we'll save it to the grade input variable that's how it works. You can also try this, uh, or like actually, lahat naman to, if you can do it now or sometime try it lang very ano naman na di ba very leading na yung comments just replace them ha you can replace them kasi yan na mismo yung part na needed for a specific problem this is this one's pretty easy then and then yung yung for loop for all elements in the list. So for this part, basically what you're gonna do is ano lang, ito, for x in students. So that's how you will ano naman. Pero syempre not in the students ganun. It's grades. It's supposed to be grades. <laughs> and ito naman, similar to what is ano, what was displayed dito, I think. It was like if z is greater than or equal to 3.5. Actually, same lang talaga. You know, just just try it. Actually, masaya naman yung mga ganitong problems. Medyo ano pa lang to, like very, <laughs> very beginner friendly pa naman. I think medyo five minutes niya tayo. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's try na ha. Uh, tingnan niyo na lang in case na may mali, ta mali sa program na nagawa niyo. Feel free to run it yung ano. Run the program pala ha to see, para makita niyo yung output. Okay. Uh, so ito, while the input, while, our input natin is read input is not equal sorry if i forgot to mention this not equals is uh, uh dito. exclamation mark equal sign is not equals to our not equal to let's have a negative one then uh uh what's this 
forgot colon <laughs> yeah colon append the input to the grades list so how do we append uh grades that append and then ano yung i-append natin yung input natin grade input ba yun yung sinif natin sa variable natin so that's what we're going to append to our list and then grade input will take another input so how what we're gonna do we're just gonna copy paste this part <laughs> kasi parang kailangan niya ulit ng bagong input eh para kasi parang hindi siya matatapos unless negative one yung i-input ng teacher and then after that we'll just print the list of grades print our list which is named grades and then let's run this program okay so it's gonna ask for input let's say ang score niya ay 98 Wow, good student. And then let's say nag flop siya sa second. <laughs> oh no, naging seventy six. And then ninety again. That's let's say eighty eight, eighty seven. So it will take as many as you want. So kapag okay na yan, like sufficient na yung five na yan, put just input negative one, and then it will terminate the program. And there we go. We have our list of grades. Yeah, di ba madali lang naman? Okay, I think we can still. Manage to, I know, we can still do this part really quickly, na lang. Ah, uh, so given that you have your list of grades and we have an entire list of grades, use a for loop to find the sum of all the grades and then its average. So initially, simply we have a sum of a sum of zero, because we don't have anything to add. And then for all the elements in the grades list, for x in grades, what we're gonna do? Sum should be equals to the current va value of the sum plus the current element. So how do we access the current element? Uh, sum will be equals to the current value of the sum, which is also the sum, plus its current element. So ganon kasi yan kapag parang ginagamit niya tong element na to, nagbibilang siya. Pag nagbibilang siya, so for the first one, parang i-access niya to ninety eight. Ganon. Sum will be sum plus 98. Ganon. Tapos uulit-ulit siya hanggang sa matapos niya yung lahat ng nasa list natin. And then our, our, our average should be equals the sum average. Let's say, let's create our variable average. Paano natin isasolve yung average? Sum divided by, ano yung, eh, sorry. Sum divided by the number of Elements in our list. How do we find the element, the number of elements in our list? We use the function len. So len grades, and then I think I don't know if we should put ano. Pero just to be safe, so let's try this. We'll print our sum. Sorry, oh my God, I don't know how to type. Print sum and then. Print our average. Okay, let's remove our comments. Send the data, and then let's run our code. There we go. We have our sum of four hundred thirty nine, and then our average of eighty seven point eight. Hey, programmers, na kayo guys. <laughs> yeah, so yun lang. I think you can do this, naman, on your free time as well as yung Facebook chat challenge. It's very good way to ano to practice coding. And I think that's all the time we have for my part. Should I, <laughs> hello, host? Oh, yes. Wow. Thank, you, Thank you so much for that, Jimson. It was super wow, informative, inspiring, so insightful. Truly, anyone can be a UX dev. I hope all of you guys got something out of that. And I hope that wasn't too much to take in. But just in case, we'll be having a five-minute break. Before we proceed on to our next speaker, in the meantime, you guys can answer our second slide poll through the link in the chat box, which will be sent in just a little bit. Um, and do please be back by three fifty. And so yes, feel free to take a um snack or a drink, get some water. Or just take a bit of um a rest <laughs> as you kind of digest and process everything that uh, Jim's on the table to teach us through his talk. Ayan. So I hope you guys got um had a lot of fun for our first half of this.
this session for this afternoon. Yes. See you guys in just three minutes. 